at the La Chapelle Arena as we build up to the first of our four medal encounters in this session of play. The bronze medal match in the uh, combined wheelchair class one, class two, women's doubles here. Uh, Switzerland, Cynthia Mathes and Ilaria Rengli, the second uh, seed to take on the Thai pair who won bronze at the Tokyo 2020. Paralympics, Sujarat Pukam and Amnoy Wetwitan. The uh, teams about to be introduced here to court number two. And their respective uh, records, as you can see there uh, in uh, the event so far. But this is where it really matters, of course. The tussle for a Paralympic medal. Sur ce cours numéro 2, le match pour la médaille de bronze du tournoi double dame, catégorie WH1, WH2. On court number 2, women's doubles, catégorie WH1, WH2, bronze medal match. Représentant la Suisse, Cynthia Mathez, Ilaria Rengli. Representing Switzerland, Cynthia Mathez and Ilari Rengli. So the Swiss pair out first here. So absolutely rocking atmosphere. And uh, he's caught in play. And their opponents here mentioned the uh, bronze medalists from three years ago. Sujarat Pukum and Unwe Wetwitan of uh, Thailand here into the court. And we'll then have the Spin of the coin, choice of serve, receive, and uh, choice of end, and then we can get to the warm up. Excuse me, come for us. I have pink and white. White, pink for you. White. Seven receiver. Seven, switch seven. Switch receiver. Yes. So, the uh, formalities out of the way. The uh, warm up can begin shortly. Guy McCree here with you at the Port de la Chapelle Arena. I'd like to be joined by. Uh, Katie Hall for this one. Uh, Katie, I mean, you, it's great to have you in the in the box here. Great to work with you together for the first time on this because, I mean, you know the players here and everything, what they put in as well to get to this stage. And in terms of the Paralympic Games as well, I mean, just the second staging of it for para badminton. And we've got here to start the session two fantastic pairs here to watch and, and enjoy over, over the coming minutes. Yeah, definitely. With its second outing at, um, here at Paris, we've, we've had top quality badminton for the last few days. And... This will promise to be an exciting bronze medal match. Exciting to see Europeans in the stages of the wheelchair games as well. The World Championships was very much dominated um, by, by the Asian players, and it's so nice to have Ilaria Rengli and Cynthia Matez here in this bronze medal match and reaching these latter stages of, of the Paralympics. Great achievement for them. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, seeded two here, but as you say, through to... Uh, fighting here for a medal and actually individually as well. I mean, uh, through the para badminton events, singles as well, they've played well, focusing here on, the, on their doubles uh, progress. You've been impressed with them uh, through the draw? Yeah, very much so. Um, I think I haven't seen Ringley as much as I have Cynthia Matez. She's fairly new ish to the scene last sort of five, six years, and I'm really impressed with how how she's done in this competition. She's a strong player, she moves fast in her chair. I think she's She's been a force to reckon with, for sure, and will be for years to come. Still very young player, so she, for years to come, she will be in the top top of her class, for sure. They're on the way up. Um, 
their opponents here, bronze medalists. I mean, they've been around the, the, the two here, Pukum and Wetwithan, a very, very long time uh, in the sport and obviously had that achievement for three years ago as well to bring into this, this bronze medal match. Yeah, wealth of experience between both Pukum and Wetwithan. They've Ready to play. lost to y Yamazaki and, and Satomi in the, the semi-finals and it was a result that they've, they've seen many a time from that pair, but... They've had a, a great run here and they are a very experienced pair. They've played in these stages in the finals of tournaments and bronze medal matches and Paralympics. They've they've been here before and they've got the experience and, and the skill and I think this will be a really interesting game between the experience and the sort of the up and coming pairs that, that are gonna be setting the para, para badminton world on fire for the next few years. about ready to go then here first of these medal matches in uh, the uh, wheelchair competitions here at Paris 2024 ladies and gentlemen on my right Sujirat Pokom and uh, Amnoi Wet Witan Thailand and on my left Cynthia Mate and Iliria Rengli Switzerland Amnoi bet we turn to serve to Cynthia Mate. Love all. Play. Katie, it's worth just first of all, obviously, we've got new viewers joining all the time. In terms of, um, if you like, key kind of things to look out for, key differences, rules uh, to look out for. Yeah, let's go through absolutely everything. So a lot of it is similar to, to badminton, but the key differences for you to point out uh, in, in, in para badminton here. Yeah, key, key differences in the wheelchair game especially is the size of the court. So the size of the court is completely the same as um, standing, standing badminton, but the service line to the net is out. So any shuttle that lands in front of that service line is out. The players don't play right up to the front of the net. In terms of the rules, though, everything's pretty pretty much the same. Same shuttle, same net, uh, double service, the back tram lines are out, serve diagonal, score's the same, nothing really changes. The players, just that one section of the court is out. Apart from that, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. Service over. Two, one. Oh, lovely touch here. Early on from uh, Wetwitan, she's perfectly capable of that. Definitely. She'll be a key player in this in this game for sure. Steady solving. Two. Is there. Kukum's got these lovely straight and cross court drops that we will see and we will see her use extremely effectively in this game. And I think Matez and Rengli will have done their homework and will be looking when Kukum is deep on that forehand side for those cross court drops that she does so well. Unfortunately, she hit it into the net, but it was a good read. Seven over. Three, Six points four. here uh, being shared. Respective coaching teams, of course, uh, either end of the, uh, the court here. Fantastic setting, this. The same setting at the badminton events at the, uh, at the Olympic Games and now here at these Paralympic Games, this uh, arena buzzing. Perfect setup for this type of event. I think I spoke to a few people this week, a few of the coaches, a few of the players and, and just some of the officials who say this is the best arena that badminton has ever been showcased in. It's fantastic, the conditions are great, the atmosphere is great, the noise, it generates such an atmosphere for the players. It's a great 
draw by Matez. The use of the middle of the court is so important in, in wheelchair doubles. What it does is it brings both the players into the middle, but it opens up the gaps at the side. But where it's really effective in that case is the punch cleared up the middle and brought both Wet with Anne and Pukum, who are currently sitting right hand on right side, left handed on left side. So bringing them both into the front and the middle. They're both having to come in on their backhand. They've not made the decision who's taking that shot. Great deception from Matez. That's good as well there. Interesting, I mean, comparing it with, with other sports, those coming in as well, if you think of a left right hand combination as well mm. in in doubles is seen in other sports as a as a, as a real advantage to have yeah. over say two right handers you know, most of the population in the world are right handed yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. how does that extend to power of abington is it is decisive it's um it's different because in this case if you're playing say standing standing doubles there's an opportunity to rotate. So really having a left hand and a right handed player, there's um, sort of nuances that you need, you know, if it's up the middle and you're both on your um, your forehand side, um, you, you know, you can have one attack. It's, it's different, it's different because you don't rotate as much. So actually having um, a right handed on the right side and a left hand on the left side does, can leave the, mod the middle more exposed because it's around the head side and it's a, bit, it's a, a little bit weaker, um, or at least it's the, you know, you're always strongest on, on your forehand side. Um, whereas in doubles, standing doubles, there's a lot more opportunity to rotate, so it doesn't seem as big a, an area of um, sort of weak win points and things like that. It's been a good start here from uh, the Swiss. Talk about the ties having the experience of three years ago, playing and winning this particular match. And the Swiss, of course, as you mentioned, these kind of emerging force representing Europe in, yeah. the, in the wider context started well here. And definitely coming into this match, the the Thai the Thai pair were on paper the the strongest, the ones that you know you'd sit down and say, yeah, I think I think they'll they'll win this one. But the form that Rengli and Matez have been on this week. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be so sure that it, that it would. That it might not go their way for sure. Great first smash from Renkley. She's really powerful. Yeah, she's, uh, of course, in the background. I know the uh, BWF, everyone's been quite interested in uh, Renkley in terms of the artistic uh, gymnastics yes, background yeah. as well and her thoughts on that. Yeah, she got into the sport. I had a look and actually with Cynthia Matez's uh, old doubles partner, Karen Sitter Earth, she. she Huge figure in, in para badminton, the growth of para badminton as well. I played with Cynthia in in Tokyo, and um, it's so good to have a young young player in from the Swiss team inspired by 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 Karen and and all of her work and what she's put into the sport. See that middle, yeah, and when you've got the right handed, left handed player, they've both went for it. Massive gaps, yeah. It's funny that because even with Pukum and Wet with Han, you know, a pairing so knowing mm. of each other's movements, you can still exploit that as you highlighted through the middle where you get the racket clash, they go for the, the same shuttle, yeah, for sure. You can, there's always. No matter the, the years of experience of players, there's always ways that you can you can get them a little bit confused, a little bit in each other's way. Well, it's just wide. Dribble wide there from Pukum. It's the Swiss back in front in this uh, very tight 
opening section to this bronze medal match. One point between them at the moment. reach for, for Matez there. That's the lead at the mid-game then for the tie pet. For the moment. She's really quick off the wheel in her racket the racket hand there. Pukum serve was, was a bit loose, but it was a great reaction, a great shot from Matez. And this is the ties, though, who uh, lead. Just the one point, then. The uh, difference at the mid-game interval here. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't... I would expect that. I think, um, as I said, it's, you know, last twice they've met, it's been very much in the way of of the tie pair, and it's the, I don't think the scores were particularly close either. So, but Matez and Rengli have been in such good form. I've been really impressed with them this week, and I, I think coming into this game, they should be confident. They've got nothing, nothing to lose here, right? They're playing against one of the best pairs in the world. They're playing for a bronze medal. Let's just go on and play good badminton and be confident. And I think that's what they're showing here. Is that yeah, we're going to bring it to you guys. We're we're the best, one of the best pairs in the world. But you know, so are we. That's what we've seen so far, just as you say, the one point between them at this stage. That's hardly decisive. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Ziming is with the service here. That's high pair. Good turn in straight away from uh, Rengli. It was interesting as well, we were talking about it just a little bit earlier with Rengi about this artistic gymnastics, which is saying actually we're trying to draw the parallels with the skills needed to be mm. a para badminton yeah, player, yeah. and actually was saying it kind of helped her. Yeah, they're different disciplines ultimately, but there are some oh, skill yeah. similarities. 100%. I mean, for one, just being the ability to move quickly in the chair, to move in different directions. For a wheelchair two athlete, using the core and yeah. using your reach is so important and to have that strength in her core to be able to lean right far back and hit punch clears from, from the back of the core and hitting angles from all sorts of areas is really important. So that artistic gymnastics background and having the movement and the flow and the strength will really support will support her, her para badminton career. This was good. Excellent length. Oh. That's so nice. <laughs> Does it for fun, doesn't she, Pukum? Oh, yeah. She does it so perfectly as well. 90% <laughs> of the time. But look at that space in the tram line. She's seen it so early. She's went back and just... She's got a lovely, lovely drop shot. Play left. Have a let there. Uh, Rengli, saying that she wasn't ready. say on the service struggling to get runs going uh, yeah. in, in, in this first game yeah 
And the serves are one thing um, that you can control in the game, so you want to try and use it as effectively as possible. So there's a couple of really good serves, like the, I mean, out wide gets used a lot, like a kind of fast, flat serve. But if you don't hit it, you don't hit it well, it can give your opponent like a quick, quick advantage. We saw it with Matez with Pukum playing that loose serve. Matez just took advantage straight away. Rengley hitting smashes off serves. It's the one thing you can control and the one thing that you should aim to do is close to, to perfect each time, no matter where you're serving. Talking about runs now, this is one that the Thai pair are putting together four straight points. Oh. What a great vision though, both, yeah. both the Swiss pair moving in towards the middle. Pukum just holds and pushes. Yeah, it was wide, but it would have been it would have been perfect. A straight out winner if it just wasn't a few inches out the side. It's one of those kind of a good miss because the Swiss will look at that and they'll go, right, we want to keep it away from yeah. her because next time that won't happen. She'll make that. A couple of points though now back here. Countering there, Mathez. Good reactions. Correct shot there, like wide open space in front of Pukum. She came in so early, Cynthia. It would have been a winner, just just short of the line. Yes, huh? She's done that a few times. Mm. It did it the last point as well. She comes in so early that actually she can do a lot of damage from there. Soft. She can hit it flat and hit a drive. So it does put the, the opponents kind of, you know, I'm not sure what to do, where, do I, where should I move? Should I get ready for a drive? So that's why it's quite, why it's so effective. Trying to attack there with Sam, but it didn't work out. And uh, Swiss are just hanging in there. Trailed by the single point at the interval, and here again it's a single point. Yeah, they've done really well. I think a couple of key things. Cynthia has been great at the front, um, for sure. And done a good job of utilising the middle and, and opening up the gaps. Looks so fast at the front. Yeah, again. She's got Pukum right at the back. She knows that she's, you know, if Pukum hits a clear, Cynthia's, she's got time to go back. She can, she'll be able to get a racket on it. So she takes a chance and moves forward and takes the shot really early. Wet with Anne to try to come across and, and, and help her partner out, but it's just too good a shot from Matez. Swiss go into the lead now. Look at how early she's taken the shuttles on the service line. This is a fantastic game by the Swiss. Good switch, good read by Pukum. Ooh, no, short. Sure. And the Thai 
Spurs are in a little bit of trouble now here, being led basically pretty much through the entirety of this opening game. They're now two points from losing it. Long, that's not by much. And we take the service here. Absolutely the correct shot again. Wrangley and Matez are just they're making brilliant choices with where they're placing the shuttle, they're opening up gaps, they're finding, you know, they're they're pushing wet with Dan and and putting them out of position and opening up those spaces. They've done really great to find those gaps. There yeah, again, 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 just it's, it's funny because you know. Minchin talked about it beforehand about Matez that she was getting a lot of the shuttle. Mm. She's been getting it, but she's probably here being the best player of the four in she's this game. She's been outstanding so far. Yeah, like, she's a, they're both such strong players, and I, I really love the aggression in this game and how they're not afraid to smash, they're not afraid to play hard. Yeah. And that's what I've loved about the development of the game at this level is how aggressive the players are. And it's not just about, oh, let's pin the shuttle on the wheelchair one athlete all the time and then, you know, hit a winner. It's, it's very much about working as a partnership and, yeah. and being aggressive. And I love that. I love how it's changed and how it's developed. Yeah. The ties save the uh, the first of the game points here. Got the service back, but they're not out of trouble yet here. Swiss pair have played so well. And take this opportunity and move clear in the bronze medal match. Oh, that's Great class. Vision. Oh, that game point down. Delivering there. So now, as it is in the sport in general, we need two point winning margin here, 20 apiece. With the Swiss having had those two game points. So deep that as well, getting Matez that time. That was a great punch clear by Pukum. Yeah. Hit it at the right time as well. Got it right in behind Matez. It's a hard shot for her to get power on. Three points in a row. And game point now for Thailand. Oh. Oh. Is that just that's just a little bit the now the experience from 2018 down? Four points in a row. Sees Wetwitan and Pukum here take the opening game of this bronze medal match. 22-20. Brilliant way to finish that first game from Wetwitan. They set up those last sort of four rallies that they won in a row perfectly. They were, you know, behind a little bit and just that experience, like we say, come through and They've just been solid. The last four points tie pair just they weren't scared, you know. Let's just let's just keep the shuttle in the court. Let's just get it into the corners, move it around, get them a little bit confused. That last rally went with hands, punch clearing up the middle, opening up the gap at the front, and both the Swiss players going for the shuttles. It's a great tactic and it's worked really well for them. And it's a shame that, that the Swiss couldn't couldn't take that first one though. Yeah, the numbers from that. Opening game then. You know, the big thing really, you can break down the numbers, but <laughs> they were 2018 up and the tie pair four points in a row, and that's why they're a game to the good. It's those key moments because in terms of level of performance so far, I mean the Swiss have been more than a match for them. You couldn't really pick too much major fault. I mean they've played some great points there. No, absolutely not. And They've, been, they've not made too many mistakes either. What the good thing about the, the game on both sides is there's a lot of like winning points. There's a lot of creating, you know, forced errors rather than, you know, throwing serves in the net or returns of serves out the side. It's been, every point has been worked for really, really well by all four players. I mean, there's a bronze medal on the, on the plate here, right? You, got, you know, you can't be giving away cheap points and no one has done that. It's just been a quality, a quality match so far. So 
Again, gone in this uh, bronze medal match in the women's doubles combined WH1 two classification here. Bronze medalist from three years ago in Tokyo. A game to the good here, looking to repeat an achievement. And the way Wet Bitan and Sutovac Pukum. Saving so game points there to move clear in this one on. Ilaria Rengli and uh, Cynthia Mathes. An immediate let here, they weren't ready. Bit confusion there, Pook can move forward. I don't know if Wet with Dan thought she was she was gonna go for it, but it was very much on her side, so good return anyway for Matez. As we're saying, even a pair who know each other so well, they can be a little bit miscommunication. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I mean two of the most more well-gelled, well-drilled players, aren't they, out there? In which they play together. slight danger of having a, a lefty and a righty um, is that shot up the middle when you do have both four hands in the in the middle of the court. I think it probably should have been wet with Anne. She was in a, a better position. She was a bit faster in the in the rear of the court, but doesn't really matter now. The point's gone to, to the Swiss. <laughs> What she's all about, just calmness. Sonified by Pickham and putting those away. wise there for the uh, players just to pause There's a lot of noise in the arena not in general but particularly yes. at that moment I mean there's something they're used to as well I mean this is obviously it's an unbelievable atmosphere I, around with the matches going on but you can I don't, I don't know if, if they are used to this you know I think I don't think any of these players will have played and played something in front of quite something like quite like this yeah. before yeah. I mean definitely Paralympics in Tokyo because of, of the pandemic because of Covid there was a, there was no spectators at all so it was played in silence virtually with yeah. apart from the odd member of staff and teammate that was allowed to watch from a distance but I don't in my experience in, in the years that I've been involved in, in para badminton Nothing I've like never this. I've never the French are always the loudest team they've always got the biggest team on the international circuit and they are always the loudest but the fans have been incredible this week but I don't think I, yesterday in, in Matez's and Ringley's um, semi-final Matez hit a few miss hits and she was looking around the crowd and I think it was the noise that put her mm, off really mm. because it, she won't have I mean, none of them are used to playing like this maybe in, in the, the Pan-Asian games potentially because you know the sport is, is huge in, in I Asia about, I was about to say that, that Pukum and uh, Wetwitan possibly with possibly, something yeah. resembling this sort of uh, this atmosphere they played in. Oh, that's good. Great. The, the Swiss, as you say, it's all new in many ways, but they continue here to impress uh, Matez and. They're still Lee being here. very aggressive. Mm. This, this is key, right? Is the, the speed and the aggression from Matez and Rengli, and they're reading the game really well. So Pukum has got this fantastic drop and fantastic cross, like I've said, but. Rengley's on it 
every time. She's reading them. She knows she's she's really switched on in this match. Really impressed with them. It's a shame they didn't take that first game because this that is a great they've got a great lead so far in the second one. Back there. Lead back up to four. Wait, we then flying back. I think Matez just held the shuttle a little bit longer there, and I think Wait, with then thought she was going to lift it. She, she moved far too quickly. Left a wide open gap. Yeah, it's long. So into the mid-game interval they go, and the Swiss here getting some real reward here for their continued high level. A lead of six at the mid-game for Rengli and Matez. Yeah, Matez again being, being very... I'm really impressed with her in this game. She's working really, really hard, and it's not about... You know, for her, it's not just about, I need to get a racket to the shuttle. She's doing stuff with it when she gets to it, especially when she's under pressure. When she's got time, we've seen... She's had some fantastic winners when she's got time, especially at the service net... Service line, sorry, towards the net. Um, and then when she's under pressure at the back, she's just confident to just play some drop shots, put in that, put in punch clears. They might not be great, but she knows that her partner can cover. And Rengley's looking for everything all the time. She's they're working fantastically as a pair in this game. Actually, as well, building on your point, I mean, obviously, everyone here is just enjoying amazing medal match here going mm -hmm. on. But from their point of view, very good response to what happened because, I mean, you can easily that, that affect you when you're 2018 up. Yeah. You lose, you think we're playing as well as we can here and we're still a game down. But what they've done there in the, in the first half of that is mentally very, very strong from, from Rengli and Mathis as well. For, for sure, and when you're that close in, in the first game, you know, when you were so close to get to getting the game, if, it, if they'd lost, you know, to five, six, seven points, you have a different attitude. Um, but for this, because they were so close, they've come out and went, do you know what, we played well, let's do more of that, and we can we can, we can, can take this second game. And they're, they're doing it so far. Fantastic attack from Matez. Switch. Oh, the time there, kindly. Didn't kick to the net. We've seen that last rally, though. Great vision from Rengley again. Matez was pushed so far into that round the head corner. 
it was obvious the shot that Wet With Them was going to play. She played the straight drop. Rengley was straight in, pushed it back over the net. They switched super quick. There was no confusion. It's a shame Wet With Them put that shuttle in the net, but oh. that was yeah. close. Yeah, but short. Expected to make it. Seven now. The advantage. Point. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure she got out of the way. Panicked you know? a little bit there, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how close that was to hitting her. What a rally. Yeah. And, and again, the analytical points you're making from the Swiss perspective, we're seeing it there yeah. in a point where you know, the ties were asking a lot of questions in that point, but they're, they're coming up with the answers here at the moment. on this as well talk about we talked a lot about wet return but Sujarat Pukan as well here Swiss doing a good job on her in a sense you'd argue because she's not having in this second game quite the impact would say that she's capable of having for that pair no absolutely not and wet with hands taking majority of the shots and the rallies are keeping the shuttle away from Pukan even though she's the wheelchair one athlete on the court, they're keeping that away from her because she's got such a fantastic touch and she can be so deceptive, so they keep it away from her. But then, because she's not doing anything in the rally, she gets caught out on like pushes at the net because she's she's kind of stagnant. She's sitting yeah. watching well, where I mean, the mark is. And... the case there where exactly. you expected to get to that, yep. and to that, but she's just caught. Yeah. Service uh, lost by the Swiss there, but it's a lead of nine. <laughs> Despite that, they're looking good here. They force uh, a final game, unless the ties can produce something pretty special from here. Quickly there. And very, very few mistakes, uh, the Swiss here. One should have liked again. Great clear from Pukum. You saw Rengley moving forward. She was expecting the straight drop. She was going to come in and support Matez, but Pukum seen that huge gap in the rear four, in the rear court on the forehand side for Rengley. It's a great punch clear. Oh my goodness. What a shot! That was incredible. <laughs> Such quick racket slices through the shuttle on that reverse into the tram lines. Marvelous shot, and what a time to do it! That's him as well. They're starting to put put a run together here. Pokemon, what we can. Trailing by five. It's a good break from Matez and, and Rengley to have. Where with Anne shouldn't be serving in the net, not at those points when she's when they're making you know two or three points in a row, and that's a good break from from the Swiss. A bit of a danger of a comeback there. 
Yeah, the again, smash from building Pickham. up a head of steam here. Pukum and Wet return. This is becoming concerning. It's five again. They've got the service back. Steely look about them here. Short. Yeah. Pickham just right into the middle. Both Matez and Rengley went for the same shot. Now this is now getting very tight. Led by nine, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, ten, nine. ten points ten because points. of course they got the service back that corrected on that. Went to nine. Next stage it was 17-7. Now two points between them. Oh, oh and you, can you believe that? I mean you would have um, you would have put your house on that. I <laughs> Just about the <laughs> house, my car. <laughs> That's a big point there. Puts the Swiss now. Service back, two away. No mistake yeah, there. The shot. from Pukum again. I wonder how much the noise of this crowd is affecting <laughs> Ringley and Matez. Well, we come back to that earlier point. I mean, I, I'm sure it's difficult for the tie pair, but yeah. one that a little bit, I mean, not crowds quite like this, as we were saying, but more experience of playing mm. in front of noisier atmospheres. And that's, she's been looking for it, and now has found that as well. The cry of delight as she locks up the scores here, Wet with Town. That's just brilliant. I mean, she's she's been so she was so quick there coming in, took the shot really early, found that space. Ringley was lucky to even touch it. Two points away from the. Oh, it's out. Yeah. Oh, it's out. Now they are on the brink of. Winning the bronze medal again. What a fight back this has been from Pukum and Wetwitan here. Now with bronze medal points. I mean, that was a great, great sight by Ringley. She saw Wetwithan coming for Like, look at how she moves forward. Massive gap. Wetwithan would not have been able to stop and come back and get that. And Ringley's just seen that gap, held and flicked it. And the bronze medal point saved by the Swiss. Yeah, again into that little pocket, that postage stamp. 
I mean, if there's ever... Uh, Wet With Land's made a few mistakes at the front yeah. this game, but if there's ever a time to hold your nerve and play shots like that, well, it this is, is this. The, this is the thing, isn't it? Again, they've got the bronze medal point. You think at the end of the first game, they're saving their very best for yep. when it matters. Oh! Oh! oh. Can't get enough reach. Another bronze medal point goes for the ties. Well, this now goes beyond the uh, opening game, which finished was 22-20 to Pukum and Wetwitan here. Now 21 each in this second game. Three quarters of an hour played. In. A lovely shot again, that cross, backhand push. Just a short flick of the racket. good from the Swiss to hold their nerve in that last point. It was a long rally. Um, just making sure they keep the shuttle in the court, waiting for the tie pair to make, to make the mistake. Oh, that's, oh, listen, that's lovely. Oh, you didn't think it was... <laughs> I thought it was just going to land short there. She somehow managed to get that little dribble. What a smart change from Wet With Anne, though. She's won two or three points in that hold and cross, and just to hold and play straight. Great choice. Oh. Okay. So it's a short a tick. <laughs> On the fourth. Clip, the, clip the tape, though. It's yeah. It's all going on. Seem to stand still there on wet return there at the net. And they've had four bronze medal points, but the Swiss now can take this all the way and out of reach. This is what you want to see at this stage of you know a bronze medal match. This is the kind of badminton you want to be seeing. Nothing between them. Couldn't quite get the elevation, the height that she wanted. Is it going to be this time? Fifth bronze medal point. Been within grasp five times now. And quite a game in itself, this, if you think. The Swiss pair led 17-7. Mm. They've had those bronze medal points. Another one here had a game point as well. And it's a guy. Virtually everything. Just goes on. That's a great punch clear. Fast and flat. Both of them really having to lean back to get anywhere near it, but.
Just didn't miss that time. Yeah. Very, very assured, very deliberate 20, at that moment, 25. but very effective. <laughs> Sixth bronze medal point. and Amnoy Wetwitan win the bronze medal in the women's doubles WH1-2 combined category but they have had to work for it so hard the Swiss here what, what a bronze medal match that was all those moments where you thought it was over and they kept it going but at the end it's joy for the ties just as it was three years ago they win the bronze I'm, I'm virtually speechless. What a fantastic game we've just watched. I mean, the ties, everything on their shoulders there, coming in as Tokyo's bronze medalists, the higher ranked of the pair, the more experienced of the pair. But the Swiss, oh my goodness, I am so impressed with how they played. And a fantastic first game, an incredible first half and a few more points of the second game. And then the tie pair, they just... They upped to the level a little bit and they found them they found the gaps, they stopped making those mistakes, but I cannot believe how fantastic Wrangley and Matez played and you know they this they're they're a fairly new you know partnership, only a few years playing together apart from the you know with the experience of, of Pukum and Su and um wet with on the other side of the court against them. But give them four more years if they continue to play like this, if they continue to, to play towards Los Angeles. Yeah. Well, what, a, what a match there, 22-20 and 27-25 on their sixth bronze medal point. Disappointment for the, the Swiss, but what an event they've had to finish up fourth here. And as you suggest, Katie, as well, much more you sense to come from them. This could just be the start, even if they're going to be bitterly disappointed, naturally, to have just missed out there to Pukum and Wetwitan in the end. The numbers. <laughs> I mean, inc incredible. Twenty, incredible, incredible game. I'm, I'm almost. I am genuinely almost speechless. Almost an hour, 51 minutes, of incredible badminton. There was not a bad rally there. A few, you know, mistakes on serve or mistakes off. Does that doesn't matter. The, what we're going to remember is the quality that we've just witnessed. I'm so impressed with Rengley and and Matez and how they've come out and played and the form that they've shown against against the, the experience of Wet with Han and Pukum. Yeah, so they win the bronze, that's confirmed there, and of course the, uh, the gold medal match still to be decided here at these Paris 2024 Paralympic Games.